In this video I'll explain how to solve a system of equations using the solve function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you several examples and in the first example in line 2 of the code I'm showing you the basic application of the solve function. So let's assume that we want to solve the equation 3x is equal to 12. Then we can apply the solve function in the R programming language, as you can see in line 2 of the code. So within the solve function we need to specify the left hand side of the equation, so in this case 3 times x, and the right side of the equation, so in this case 12. And then if you run the solve function, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the value x is returned, so in this case 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So in this first example I have shown you a very basic application on how to use the solve function in the R programming language. However, the solve function can also be applied to more complex systems of equations and in the next example I want to show you how to apply the solve function to two matrix objects. So let's assume that we want to solve the system of equations 5x plus y is equal to 15 and 10x plus 3y is equal to 9. Then we can apply the code that you can see starting in line 4. So in lines 4 to 6 of the code I'm specifying the matrix for the left hand side of our system of equations. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of our studio that a new matrix object is appearing which is called MATA1. And if you run line 7 of the code, you can see at the bottom the design of our matrix. So as you can see, we have created a matrix with four matrix elements. And these four matrix elements correspond to the equations in our system of equations. And then in the next step, we have to specify the matrix for the right hand side. So if you run lines 9 to 11 of the code, you can see that another matrix is appearing at the top right, which is called MATB1. And if you print this matrix to the RStudio console, you can see that we have created another matrix, which is showing the right hand side of our system of equations. Now let's assume that we want to solve this system of equations using the solve function. Then we can do that as you can see in line 14 of the code. And in line 14 of the code I'm specifying the solve function and I'm applying this function to our left hand side matrix as well as to our right hand side matrix. So if you run line 14 of the code you can see that the values 7.2 and minus 21 are returned and these two values actually correspond to our x and y values in our system of equations. So you can see that by inserting these two values for the x and y values in our system of equations and then you will see that the results are correct. So in the second example I have explained how to apply the solve function to two matrix objects. However these two matrices have been relatively simple and for that reason I want to show you another example in which I'm applying the solve function to a more complex matrix. And in this third example I'm also applying the solve function to only one matrix. So if you run lines 16 to 18 of the code you can see that another matrix object is appearing at the top right of RStudio which is called MATA2. And we can print this matrix to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 19 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a matrix consisting of 5 rows and 5 columns and in these columns and rows you can see random numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to solve a system of equations based on this matrix. Then we first have to know that if we specify only one matrix within the solve function, the right hand side matrix is automatically set to the identity matrix. So if we apply the solve function as you can see in line 21 of the code, the matrix that we have just created is set to the left hand side matrix and the second matrix which is used as the right hand side matrix is set to the identity matrix. So if you run line 21 of the code 
you can see that another output is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And as you can see, this output is showing the result of the solve function when we are applying this function only to one more complex matrix. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.